This is part two of week one lecture. We were talking about um, the Puritans and the new colony and how they um, believed that any of their hardships were um, a retribution of God for their sins. And they also, on the flip side of that, they believed that anything prosperous uh, anything prosperous and any achievement um, was seen uh, it, was a, it was a blessing from God because they were living right. Unfortunately, this also extended to the Native Americans and their treatment, and they believed that righteous behavior was treating the Native Americans like heathens. We'll talk. Uh, Roger Williams will dig a little bit deeper. Um, into that. So, not everyone of the Puritan party were of a like mind. Um, in an excerpt from the Journal of John Winthrop, we see two notable cases of Puritans who did not qual follow the mass line of thinking. And Hutchinson um, differed in her views on some of the doctrine uh, and was banished because of it. And, and when you read the um, read the journal of John Winthrop, you saw she went through a lot um, of hardships after um, being banished. And then Roger Williams uh, came, really his main difference came in the form of how they treated the Native Americans, the Europeans' right to the lands that they were taking, uh, and the stance of Puritan ministers were taken in regards to the Church of England and how that was um, were they entitled to make those kinds of decisions? Uh, he wanted to separate church and state. And so, Roger Williams, um, uh, same, similar upbringing, um, he believed very deeply that the church needed reform, set off for the Massachusetts Bay Colony to escape the strictures in England, um, but he wasn't content with that radical um, way of life that he believed that the Puritans were living. And so, he was going to be literally banished to England. He was sent out of the, um, the colony. Um, but, uh, he fled to what he called Providence, uh, which is now Rhode Island, the state of Rhode Island. So, and, and he was a huge, um, fan and friend to the Indians, the Native Americans. He believed that the colonists had a lot to learn from them. Um, so, in his letter, A Key to the Language of Americas, uh, A Key to the Language of America, he proposed the Native Americans should be treated as a mission field, not as a people to be dismissed or conquered. Um, he also discusses the persecution of the Protestants, um, in a letter, the bloody tenant of persecution, um, and so, why they were, um, they, why they fleed, uh, fled, fleed, <laughs> fled England in the first place. So, I want you to read, um, I'm going entirely the wrong way and very quickly. I'm very sorry. Um, read Roger Williams, A Key into the Language of America. And I, what I want you to think about there is what Williams hopes will open with this key, this metaphorical key. And how do the Native Americans identify themselves versus how the Europeans identify them? And after you've read, check out my text notes um, and screenca screencast on Roger Williams and the key into the language of America. So, Williams demonstrates through both of these texts a desire to see others believe the way that he did, um, despite the fact that he was ostracized and persecuted for um, his belief he was cast out. Um, and so, I think that that, is, um, that really comes through in a key to the language of America. So, up until this point, um, with the writings from Winthrop and the writings from Williams, the writings are very similar to how many today may say that the Puritans were very straightforward, plain, and util um, utilitarian. Um, and they've been mostly journals, letters, and sermons. Um, so, our next author is Anne Bradstreet, and she's going to kind of break us out of this world and into the world of poetry, um, the first real poet of the, of the colonies. 
So, Bradstreet, born in Lincoln, England. Um, she got a better education than most women of her time period received. Her dad made sure that happened. She married a business associate of her father's. Um, and, um, they agreed with the Puritans, wanted a new life, moved to the Massachusetts Bay Colony, a uh, hard life, very difficult, lost some children, um, had some very, um, traumatizing things, uh, happen, uh, from that, those early years in the colonies, uh, but she managed to find beauty, she managed to find blessings, she managed to find a way to turn, bring everything back around to God, um, even when she was being tried and tested, which inspired many of her poems. So, she believed very strongly in her writing, she was very proud of her writing, but she didn't want it to be published. Her brother-in-law actually snuck um, her a book of her poems with him on a trip to England and published it without her knowledge. Um, and so, of course, that, that led to a big uproar. And um, she writes about that, uh, her feelings about that, be, about her book being published in the author to her book, which is a poem you're going to read. Uh, she continued to write until her death. There's even su evidence to, like, suggested that she was planning to publish again. She did not get a chance to do so before um, she passed away. So, she wrote long classical verses. She wrote simple musings about daily life. A, a wide variety of, of points. So, what I want you to do with, um, with Bradstreet... Uh, in the prologue, when you read the prologue, I want you to think about what Bradstreet is saying about her place as a female author. In an author to her book, what does this poem reveal about how Bradstreet feels about her work being published without her knowledge? On my dear grandchild Simon Bradstreet, how does Bradstreet deal with the loss of uh, Simon Bradstreet? Uh, for deliverance from a fever, to what is Bradstreet comparing a fever? And verses upon the burning of our house, how is this poem perhaps the clearest example of Puritan typography? Um, you remember that's using the Bible as the basis and the scripture as a basis for the events that are happening in the, this time. Okay, how do the poems as a whole? identify that we're reading the excerpt from the points of reading um exemplify puritan beliefs and then use some specific examples to explain your answer okay remember that these questions only help you on your discussions uh, they help you aid in greater understanding of what we're reading and they will also help you um on your unit exams okay so the tensions between the european settlers and the native american tribes is well known Obviously, because the Europeans came over and they decided that they were just going to claim and take and, and, and plunder and, and, and rightfully write their name on every tree, rock, and bush. Um, and the Native Americans put up with it for a little while. And, of course, anybody that's repressed or, or pushed down enough will fight back. So, in today's culture, it's, it's you know, Disney, a lot of it has been factually inaccurate obviously disney capitalized on one of the famous tales of pocahontas and the indian princess falling in love with the white man captive and and the whole story is just complete farce by the way pocahontas was ugly and john smith was like old enough to be her granddad so it's total bullocks Okay, so The Last of the Mohicans was published in 1826 by James Fenimore Cooper, and it became a movie. It was a, a classic, um, but they kind of romanticize captivity um, of the Native Americans. That, that happened after a certain time, you know, after the Native Americans started fighting back. The, a lot of settlers were captive, uh, are captured and, and, and held captive uh, from... Uh, for for quite some period of time, but our next author, her experience is has none of that romanticism that we see a lot of Indians, um, you know, Indian movies today. So, Rowlandson was born in the South of England, brought to live in America, sixteen thirty nine, lived in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. She married a Puritan minister, uh, and then on February twentieth, not uh, sixteen seventy six. 
Uh, her town was attacked by Native Americans, and she was taken captive in hell for 41 days. So, after she's released, she returns home. Uh, they move away from the colony, and she writes down all the memories of what happened to her. And that's where we get the diary, or the the diary of the cat. Yeah, I can't even remember the title right now, because it's like um, 11 o'clock at night. I'm tired. Um, I'll get to that in a second. So... She writes a lot in this diary or this um, narrative, the narrative um, in her diary, their journal entries, okay? Their journal entries. Um, she writes a lot about uh, a lot of scripture. She added a lot of scripture into the, and you, and you start to think, man, this woman was a saint to deal with this and, and, and still be giving praise to God. And this harrowing adventure. A lot of scholars say that, you know, she was trying to regain her status as a good Puritan woman. Uh, her husband and her mother-in-law uh, probably really um, influenced her with the writing part of it. That she needed to make sure she scriptured everything up really good so that it made her look like a good person. Because I'm sure that this experience was not all... Um, praise be, um, kind of that she paints it to be kind of in her story. So, um, they may have helped her along with her narrative of the captivity and restoration of Mrs. Mary Rowlandson. There's your title. Um, so while you read that, I would like for you to think about, um, the changes, shift in her language. So, um, she, she, in the beginning of the narrative, she's using a, a little bit more demoralizing terms for Indians like hellhounds, ravenous beasts, barbarous creatures, but she begins to shift towards the end of the narrative. So I want you to think about the reasoning for this change. Did she have a change of heart? Did things, um, start to become different? Like, I want you to think about those things as you read. Um... And make sure that you check out the screencast on Mary Rowlandson uh, and the narrative of the captivity and restoration of Mrs. Mary Rowlandson um, on the um, on your Canvas page. And that's it for this week uh, as far as background information and a little help on the authors for you. And I will talk to you next week.